Hello everybody, Music Theory 1, video number 14. In this video we are talking about Roman numerals for common diatonic triads. In our last video we went over the basics of Roman numerals and how we can use them. Today we're going to talk about the ones that we see most frequently in music. Let's get right into it. We use that word diatonic with some regularity when we talk about harmony or when we talk about pitch material, and what it means is that we are using pitches that are within our key, okay? Diatonic chords or diatonic melodies, anything that has to do with notes from our key, and that could be a major key or a minor key. Here we have a D major scale, you can see with our two sharp key signature. This is a diatonic scale, meaning it only has the notes from the key signature in it. If we had E flat or F natural or B flat, or any tones from outside of the key, we would have what we might call chromatic tones. But when we only have the keys from the scale, we're using diatonic pitches. Today we're going to be talking about diatonic triads. Here are all the diatonic triads that we can find in a given major key. I happen to choose D major, but we could do this in any major scale. We could start on each scale degree and stack up triads inside the key signature. This is where a lot of the harmony that we find in music comes from, from diatonic triads, from triads that are inside of our major or minor scale. Each scale degree has a triad, and because the intervals that make up a major scale are always the same, the triads are always going to be found in the same place, no matter what major scale. In other words, the one triad is always going to have the same quality in any major key the two triad, the three triad, etc. They're all going to have the same qualities. Let's take a look at some of the different qualities that we can find in our major scale. Some of the triads in a major scale do stack up as major triads. They have a major third and a perfect fifth above their root. The tonic triad built on scale degree one in a major key is a major triad. So is the subdominant triad built on scale degree four G to B natural, a major third, and G to D, a perfect fifth, and so is the dominant triad built on scale degree five, A to C sharp, a major third, and A to E, a perfect fifth. These are all the major triads we can find in a major scale, and again, it doesn't matter what major scale we're looking at. If we stack up a triad built on scale degree four, it's always going to be a major triad. If we stack up a triad built on scale degree five, it's always going to be a major triad. Okay? Let's look at some of the minor triads that we find in our major scale. There are three diatonic minor triads within the major scale. The supertonic triad built on scale degree two, the median triad built on scale degree three, and the submediant triad built on scale degree six. Two, three, and six are all diatonic triads. They all contain notes from the D major scale, in this case, and all of them have the same interval pattern, a minor third above the root and a perfect fifth above the root, making them minor triads. Okay? This gives us a little variety. We have some major triads and we have some minor triads. We're missing one last triad, which is a diminished triad. That triad is found on scale degree seven. If we stack up the triad based on our leading tone, with our leading tone as the root, we have a minor third, C-sharp to E, and a diminished fifth, C-sharp to G in this particular key, giving us a diminished triad built on the leading tone. That's the last of our seven diatonic triads. Let's just take a quick overview and look at them all at once, and then we'll go to minor. We can see that the diatonic triads in major have a nice variety to them. We have a couple major triads, a couple minor triads, and a diminished triad. Okay? We also can see that this pattern of triads, of which triads are major and which triads are minor, is always going to be the same in every major scale. Again, because every major scale is based on the same interval pattern. This can be useful for us when we're trying to identify chords. If we see a diatonic triad, a triad that only contains notes that are from the major scale, built on a particular scale degree, then we don't have to spend the time necessarily figuring out what the quality of the triad is. We don't necessarily have to look and say, well, what kind of third is this, and what kind of fifth is this, and what kind of triad is this? Because we know that if there's a triad built on six, it's always going to be minor. If there's a triad built on four, 
it's always going to be major. If there's a triad built on two or three, it's always minor. Okay? If we know where the different qualities sit in a major key, that saves us a lot of time from analyzing intervals. Now, if we forget, we can always go back and check those intervals out. It's still going to work for us. But knowing where these qualities fit in major can save us a lot of analytical time. Let's go now to our minor key. Minor is going to be a little bit more tricky, a little bit more varied. Let's take a look. I've switched to my parallel minor, D minor. Notice that I have included all the pitches from all forms of my minor scale. And so I've got my natural minor in there, which matches the key signature. But diatonic triads in minor have some variety. And that's because they can draw on the harmonic and melodic minor forms of the scale. And so we can have a diatonic triad that uses B flat, scale degree six from our harmonic or our natural minor scales, but we can also have diatonic triads that use B natural, the scale degree six from our melodic ascending minor scale. And the same is true with C, which is from our natural minor scale, or C sharp from our harmonic and ascending melodic minor scales. So I'm going to go through each chord in the minor scale, show you the different versions, and also point out which version is the more common version, because some chords are more common than others in minor. Let's take a look. The tonic triad built on scale degree 1 is a minor triad. You can see I've given it a lowercase numeral 1. We start with a minor triad, and that's the only version of this chord we ever see in minor. Okay, Tonic triad, one triad, minor here. Let's look at our next one. We have two versions of the supertonic triad, of the two chord. We have one using B flat from our harmonic and natural minor scales, and that's a diminished triad. And we also have one using B natural from the ascending melodic minor scale, and that is a minor triad. And I've put the check mark under this diminished triad because that is the one we're going to see quite more often. When we see a two chord in minor, it tends to be diminished. And so that's the one we're going to focus on. We want to keep ourselves aware for when we see that altered version, but the two diminished triad is our most common one. Let's keep going. Moving right along to our median triad built on scale degree three again, we have two versions, one using C natural from our natural minor scale and one using C sharp from our harmonic and ascending melodic minor scales. The natural one is a major triad, an F major triad here. The one with C sharp is an augmented triad, and we don't see that one too often. The major triad built on scale degree three is the one that we see with the most frequency. Subdominant is next. We have two options, minor four using B flat from our harmonic minor scale, from our natural minor scale, and major four from our ascending melodic minor scale. The minor version of this chord is, again, much more common, and so that's the one that we're going to focus on when we think about this chord. The dominant triad has two versions, minor 5 from the natural minor scale and major 5 from the harmonic and ascending melodic minor scales. And this one, major 5, by far is the most frequent version. Notice that this chord has an accidental in it. Again, it's from our harmonic and melodic forms of the minor scale, and so those don't match exactly with our D minor key signature. But it's still a diatonic chord because it is from one of those versions of the minor scale. Whenever we see five in minor, we always are going to have to remember that that leading tone is going to be altered from the key signature. This is going to be a very important one. We have two versions of the six chord as well, one using B flat as its root, which is a major triad in the more commonly found version of six. The other is using B natural here as its root, and you can see our numeral there is kind of a weird one, sharp six diminished. Sharp six saying that we're using the raised version of scale degree six. That version of the chord is pretty unusual. The major six with a B flat is the one that we see with much, much, much more frequency. And finally, we have two versions of the seven chord, one using the raised leading tone, C sharp, which is a diminished triad, and one using the lowered seventh, the subtonic, that C natural. With C natural, we have a major triad built on seven, and with C sharp, we have a diminished triad. This, the diminished triad is by far the more common version of the chord, though we do see major seven from time to time. 
but C sharp from the harmonic minor, from the melodic minor. Just like our V chord, it has scale degree 7 raised. Just like our V chord, it's the one that we're going to see more often and we're really going to want to remember to use that accidental, to look for that accidental when we're labeling this chord. Here's all of the most common versions of diatonic triads and minor together for you. Minor 1, diminished 2, major 3, minor 4, major 5, major 6, and diminished 7. Notice that the most common accidental we see in minor is the leading tone, scale degree 7. That is going to be true all the time in minor. We're going to get used to raising that leading tone. When we're looking at music, we're going to see it all the time, and so that's going to be very, very common for us. You might notice also that most of these chords come from the harmonic version of the minor scale, and that's kind of how it gets its name. We get most of our chords, our harmony, from the harmonic minor scale. The only one that differs is the three chord. We don't really use the augmented three chord that often, and to be fair, we don't use the three chord that often. So these are the ones that we're going to want to focus on when we think of minor. These are the qualities that we're going to want to think about. But as always, we're going to be watching for those accidentals and trying to remember which ones we're using where so we can properly label our chords. And so we've looked at Roman numerals for common diatonic triads. By learning which quality of triads tend to show up where in our major and minor keys, we can save ourselves a lot of time analyzing chords. We don't have to go through interval by interval every time. We can just look at what the root of our chord is and, be, and understand that, oh, built on five, it's a major triad. Built on one, well, it's a major triad in the major key or minor in the minor key. And that can save us a lot of time, get us better and more efficient at talking about our music. That's all for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in class.